been going to Lynch for 10 years. Lonnie and I met in Experience of God weekend in Arrogate, Tennessee. And I said, this man's insane. <laughs> and I said, I'm coming to see you. And he said, well, most people take a couple of years. I was there in six weeks. I've been going since for 10 years, several times a year. Sometimes I take mission teams. What you were about to hear in those books, let me tell you, this is real stuff. I go all over the world, mostly Muslim countries. But I see God do more through faith in Harlan County, Kentucky, than any place in the world. And every time I drive to Lynch, Dean, when I get to the Harlan County line, God says to me audibly, watch what I'm about to do. And he does. I don't even know if I need to say anything, do I? I uh, <clears throat> I'm honored to be here. My wife, Belinda, stand up there in the back, huh? Uh, she's been my... That's my first wife. <clears throat> Y'all get that in a minute. Uh, we've been hanging around together now. I just celebrated our 50th wedding anniversary. So we're grateful that God has led us to missions and ministry in um, Harding County. She is from Lynch, Kentucky. I'm from a little place called Hazard. I'm not a Duke boy, if you remember. Yeah. I'm just from Hazard. <clears throat> uh, but the Lord grafted us in many years ago. And I didn't understand about all this grafting stuff till I got here, so I'm a student, and I'm learning. You're never too old to learn. And so I'm excited about what I'm learning and how God is fitting all this together and has been in my life even without my understanding of it. That's the way God does it. That's what makes him God, isn't it? Yeah. And I remember in those early years, a guy named David Fisher calls me up. I'm just going to share with you some stories. And while I'm sharing these stories with you, you can turn to John chapter 6 and I'll read a verse of Scripture too. And as Vance Havre once said, I'll take my text and depart therefrom never to return there too. <laughs> so I'll try to... I'll try to stay on track if I can. <clears throat> and the Lord sent David Fisher. He was a Jew. And I didn't know much about Jews except Jesus was a Jew, and that was good enough for me. Um, <clears throat> and he came down, and he said, uh, we've heard about your ministry. He is from Oberlin, Ohio. He said, we've heard about your ministry, and I want to bring some Jewish students here, and we want to partner with different denominations and different faiths that he called it. I said, I'd be excited to do that. So um, he came down and brought those students along, and we got in a little house that they had uh, rented for that week, and he said, um, just share with us what it is you believe about Jesus. Man, that's like saying sick him to a dog, isn't it? <laughs> And so uh, I shared with that group, and God began to bless our ministry as a result of that. The coffee shop that you've seen that the Lord added, asked us to begin a number of years ago took 14 years to complete. But see, I'm not in a hurry. As Henry Blackaby would say, if you're looking at your life in terms of 70 years, you're going to miss life. You've got to look at your life in terms of eternity. God has a bigger plan than your 70 years. And so we just kind of try to fit in where God wants us to fit in. But the Lord sent to us a Messianic Jew from Johnson City, Tennessee. And we've been praying about this. Uh, I wish I could tell you how we pray. That will have to be a, at a later time. But uh, I believe God responds to his people when they pray. And so when we pray, we never doubt that God's going to do it. It's just a matter of when. Okay? It's not a matter of how. And so we prayed for 12 years. And uh, after we prayed for 12 years, God sent this Messianic Jewish guy, and he said, what are you doing here? I said, we're going to start a coffee shop in here and tell folks about Jesus. And so he brings his team up and helps us build this coffee shop. And we opened up Lamp House Coffee in Lynch, Kentucky. We have our own brand, uh, blend of coffee, and uh, that Messianic Jew really started the work in that coffee shop. Now, all I saw was a coffee shop. But now there are folks that fly into Lynch, Kentucky from Las Vegas, Nevada, Detroit, Michigan, all over the country, Nassau, Bahamas, wanting to look at Lamp House Coffee becoming a reality in their neck of the woods. 
just because God blesses it. And I guess you would say it like this. I guess I'm a recipient of the riches of those who were ungrafted. And I'm grateful to God for that. Now, when my wife and I get to Lynch, Kentucky, we have no budget. 21 years later, we still have no budget. But we've got a big God. How big is he? Is he big enough? And so what we must learn to do, if I may take the time to tell you this, is to learn to believe God again. Um, I met a guy named Henry Blackaby a number of years ago, and for 20 years I'd been serving the Lord in the flesh. i got to tell you that. As a pastor, I knew how to get it done. I was a make-it-happen guy. And everything I touched in ministry flourished and grew. But when I came to this one point in my life, I had no reference point, and everything fell apart. And God was directing me through the path of a guy named Henry Blackaby, if you've ever heard that name. And I began to look at the reality of what the Scripture was. And I said to the Lord, Lord, if this is true, if this Bible is true, it's got to be true in me. Or else it's just a story that we tell our kids about, and it really doesn't affect my life. I've been telling the story without the effect. I want the effect so that can I tell the story. Does that make sense? And so the Lord brought me to a scripture says, the Jesus' first sermon. Do you know what it was? Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is where? Now, I know that means the coming age and all that. I'll let the theologians do that. I'm not a theologian. I'm a practitioner. <laughs> I like that word. Uh, Jesus said to me, Lonnie, when you repent. Now, I've been a preacher for 20 years. The Lord said, when you repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He said, where is your hand? I said, it's right there. He said, Lonnie, when you repent, that's where my kingdom will be. You mean right here? Where I am, more than anything in the world, that's what I wanted. To see God show up and do something I couldn't explain except to say God did this. That's what I wanted. And from that day to this day, we have seen God do amazing, amazing things. Let me give you just an example. It started all started with cookie dough, right? We got to Lynch, Kentucky the blank piece of paper, and God began to send us mission teams. Folks would call us from around the country. I've been there 21 years. Hear this now. I've never called one church to say, will you come and help us? Never have I done that. God has always sent them there. And the first year, these churches started calling, saying, we want to come and help you in mission work. We didn't even have a mission. And I said, well, what do you want to do? Oh, we can put on roofs. We can build ramps. And you saw the video, didn't you? We need that stuff. I said, well, come on. And I told Belinda, I said, hon, you know, figure out some kind of form we can put together so we'll know who's coming. So they asked me to come to speak at some conference up at our Baptist assembly. And I went up there and I said, well, take our file cabinet along. Our file cabinet was a cardboard box about this big with some file folders in it. And uh, we got to looking at how many people were coming the first year. We had 600 people coming from all over the country. The second year, we had 1,200. The third year, we had 2,000. Now, you've got you to understand, from my point of view, we have 1,000 people in town. Yeah. We've got more people coming to town. We've got people in town. Yeah. And my question was, where are we going to keep all these people? Where are they going to eat? Where are they going to sleep? And hopefully, where are they going to take a shower <laughs> that week? And uh, so we began to pray for a mission house. Now, it starts with cookie dough, right? And if you're not faithful with a cookie dough, you can't expect God to give you anything else. He's going, he going to make you use your cookie dough, guarantee you. And by the way, God has given every person in this room some cookie dough. Yeah. Every, and that take on a million forms. It can look like a horse, look like a new car. It can look like an RV. It can a million things. But it's all cookie dough. Yeah. And God can expand that in amazing ways. So we started praying for this mission house. And... Uh, about two years later, the house that we were looking at, I don't know if we prayed for it or not, but the Lord taught me how to pray out of that, and it sold at auction for $25,000. I thought I'd miss God. 
I go back to God. And I said, God, you're going to have to help me understand how to pray. And the Lord said to me that day, I didn't want to give you that. I want to give you something else. And the next week, the Lord sent an investor from Georgia. And uh, this investor saw the old hospital in town, and it was vacant. He said, Lonnie, find out who owns that old hospital in town, and I'll buy it and let you rent it for a dollar a year for 10 years. And I said, wow, this would be great. Now, this had four floors, 89 rooms, <laughs> not to 13 we were praying for. So uh, I called around, fell down to Ark Land Company, owned it out of St. Louis, Missouri. And um, he said, uh, I got a guy that wants to buy that. So I hooked him up. We were excited about that for about three months. Belinda and I were walking about that high off the floor. Just couldn't wait. And then this guy calls me back and said, man, that deal fell through with the guy in Georgia. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, he's not going to buy that property. And my boss has owned to me to sell that. I got to get rid of it. I said, man, don't sell that. He said, why not? I said, because I believe God wants to use that in the mountains for his glory. He said, do you really believe that? Now, this was an unbeliever I'm talking to. He said, do you really believe that? I said, yes, sir. He said, well, why don't you buy it? That's called putting your faith where your mouth is, isn't it? <laughs> I said, okay, I'll buy it. How much you want for it? $85,000, can't take anything less. I said, okay, I'll buy it. He said, how much money you got? I said, oh, I don't have any money. <laughs> I said, my heavenly father's rich, and when he gets ready, he'll buy this building for me. He said, now I know you're a man of faith, but the best I can do is hold it for you for 30 days. I said, well, just hang on to it. That should be sufficient time for my father to come up with that kind of money. And so we began to pray. We didn't send out letters to say, y'all give. Would you, you know, send us in some money? We're praying about this. Now, nah, we just prayed and asked the Lord to provide. So God began to send us in money in miraculous ways. Uh, a friend of ours passed away, and his estate sent us a check for a few thousand dollars and said, do whatever you want to with this money. Now, I've got to decide, is this mine or is this cookie dough? Do you understand? It's a constant thing. And so I told, I told my wife, I said, "Hun, we didn't expect this, so let's start an account and just put all this money that we don't expect, we'll put it into this account. Three weeks into the deal, God had given us $25,000. Man, we're excited about that. This vice president calls me back. He says, Lonnie, you ready to close on that deal in Lynch? I said, yes, sir, I'm ready when you are. He said, okay, uh, today's Tuesday. Next Tuesday will be your 30 days. Bring me a cashier's check for $85,000. i will bring you the deed. We'll just exchange, and it'll be yours. I said, okay, you get the deed ready. Uh, I'll be there. <clears throat> he said, how much money you got? I said, I got $25,000. Yeah, he kind of laughed. Uh, he said, now you know you need eighty five. I said, yes, sir, but I don't need it today. You told me next week. And uh, what you said, what you said, brother, is right. God is never late or early. Well, that TM said that. But he's always on time. And we want him to show up early so we can figure out what to do with all this stuff. But God doesn't do us that way. So uh, <clears throat> I'll go out of town on Wednesday. My boss calls me on Thursday and said, Hun, this fellow called today. Said he'd been praying for us. And the Lord had instructed him. I love that. The Lord had instructed him to send us down some money to use on the old building. Now, that wasn't out of the ordinary, so I said, well, just tell him, send it on down. Whatever he doesn't send, we'll pray for it. Today's Thursday, got the next Tuesday, no use to worry about this. God's got this. So um, I called her back on Friday. I said, honey, you haven't seen anything about that money today. She said, yeah, he wired it down today. I said, wired it down? How much did he wire down? She said, $65,000. <laughs> Yeah, I think God deserves a big hand for that. Now, please understand that when you, somebody wires you money, you got any bankers in here? You can't go to the bank and get that out of the bank right away. I tried. <laughs> you can't. you got to let it go through this process. So the money came available Tuesday at 12 o'clock. And I got a cashier's check for $85,000 at 1 o'clock. I handed it there in front of Mr., uh, Mr. Irons there in front of our retreat center, now called Solomon's Porch. His eyes got big, and he said, boy, are you sure a man of great faith? I said, no, it has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with the Father. I told you that when he got ready, he would buy this building to me for me. And you can come to know the Father just like I do through his son, the Lord Jesus. Amen. And Terry gave his heart to Jesus that day. You understand? Now, as you also saw, we have an equestrian ministry. And Terry Irons, who is the vice president for NRP, uh, has committed verbally to over a million dollars to provide us with horse trails from our farm all the way over to our coffee shop. 
15 miles of trail. It is pretty amazing to me what God can do. Now, I said that to say, in John chapter 6, you find the, the story of the five loaves and the two fish. Now, I'll just go through this briefly. And he said the people sat down. Now, watch this close. And he blessed the bread and the fish. And to whom did he give it? The disciples. He didn't give it to the people, did he? He gave it to the disciples. In other words, it was like he was giving it to you and me, cookie dough. And Jesus himself did not see the miracle that he just did. As was the custom, the master sat in an elevated position and taught. As he distributed that, the disciples went out into the crowd. Some say, theologians may say, 15,000 strong in that crowd, if you count everybody. And if we had, that's a few more than we have here today, right? But you couldn't see the end result of that. But at, watch this. As the disciples went and gave out the bread and the fish, the disciples saw the fish and the bread multiply. That was revolutionary to me. I said, Lord, you mean you're just giving us fish and loaves that as we share it with the people and share the good news of Jesus Christ that you will multiply that? That's what he's always done. Now, watch. So Jesus goes away. They go across the river. I'll just kind of condense this. The next morning, they just had a free meal. They get up. Don't, no Jesus, no food. They jump in the boats, head across the lake. They get over to the other side, and they finally find Jesus over there. <clears throat> and Jesus said to them, why are you looking for me? Now, in Harlan County language, you know what he's saying? You know why y'all here this morning? Y'all here because you got a free dinner last night and you looking for a free breakfast this morning. But he said to them, <clears throat> don't labor for things that perish, but rather for things that endure to eternal life. If you're just working for what you can get, you'll get it and miss life. But invest your life, invest your resources in something bigger than you that outlasts you more than the 70 years so that eternity can be changed for someone along the way. Well, I, I'm not going to tell you about all provisions, but we, as the ministry began to grow, our need for staff began to grow. And we began to pray, Lord, we, we can't do all this. Belinda and I were working sometimes 20 hours a day. And it was physically tiring. And so, and it was spiritually draining. So we asked the Lord to send us people to help us. Today, we have 22 full-time staff people, and we don't pay any of them. They work 40 to 60 hours every week on different ministries. And you say, well, how do they live? <laughs> they live by faith. Uh, Matthew 6 will teach you that, right? If you need to go back and look at that, he said, why don't you consider the sparrow? It doesn't sow, it doesn't reap, but God feeds them. Aren't you more important to God than the sparrow? You know why you are? You've been created in his image. That's why. Or he says, why don't you, what about the clothing you wear? Don't worry about that. Why don't you consider the lily of the field? I tell you, Solomon's all of his glory. He's not dressed like one of these. But doesn't God care for you more than he does the lily? Of the field? Of course he does. Then he says in Matthew 6, my wife's favorite verse, First seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be what? Amen. You mean, it, now I had to come to say, is that true? Or is that just something we read and tell somebody about, but it doesn't affect me? It does affect you. Now, not everybody is called to live the way we live. You can live by faith on the job, okay? But if God takes your job away, does God's provision cease? Of course not. God's provision is always sustained by God. And sometimes we look at the provider more than we look to God, the one who provides the provider for what we have. And so we just decided if this is true, then God's going to do it in me. Or I'm just going to tell you now. Either God's going to do it in me or I'm going to die believing what this says. Yeah. I'll starve to death 
but I'll starve to death loving God. If he doesn't feed me, it's okay. And uh, you can tell I haven't missed too many meals. <laughs> and for 21 years, my wife and I have not received a salary from any agency or organization. And um, we just had the opportunity to retire. How do you retire from doing nothing? I mean, it's kind of hard to do, isn't it? Uh, we kind of retired. We kind of do this kind of thing, go around and speak at different occasions. And uh, I know that y'all like buying a pig in the poke when I came over here. You, you didn't know this guy from Kentucky and still may not. Uh, but the Lord has been good to us. We have seen 33% of our entire population come to know Jesus. Now, if you translate that to a major city, it's spiritual awakening. But see, we're small. And we're confined. But God is doing a tremendous work. And the message of what he's doing in Lynch, Kentucky, is now going around the world. Is that my design? No. I'm just an old boy in the mountains of eastern Kentucky who, are there, who is there for two purposes, to help people and share Jesus. And in the process of that, we're now sending missionaries even to Jerusalem and Israel to share the good news there through our staff. It is amazing what God does. Tell you one more thing, and I'm through. Uh, I could tell you many of these it's some of, in some of our material. Um, but just show you, sometimes God gives you something, and you don't know why. But if everything God gives to you is for his glory, then you need to look at why. Why is it you have what you have? It's not by accident. So I'm sitting in my office one day. I get a call from a pastor. He said, uh, I got a guy flying in from Orlando. He wants to come up and look at your retreat center, our Solomon's Porch four-floor, 89-room building that was now fixed up by mission teams and looking like Holiday Inn, <laughs> looking really nice. And so uh, I said, okay, bring him on up. So he comes up, looks around. He said, I got a guy flying in from Dallas, Texas. I want you to meet. Now, what are the odds that a guy from Orlando, Florida, and Dallas, Texas are going to fly to Lynch, Kentucky, where the nearest airport is three and a half hours away to meet with me. Do you understand? God directs the steps of a righteous man. And every encounter you have, God has some purpose in that. Let's look at that. And I said, okay, I'll meet with you. I met. They weren't too impressed, and neither was I. <laughs> But they said, we want to meet with you again on Wednesday morning. So I met with them again. They took me across the mountain and showed me this 25-acre beautiful college campus built by the Presbyterians back in 1914 as a preacher school. Now, it was kind of in disarray. We looked around for a few hours, and I said, why is it that the Lord would want me to look at this with you? Do you need my help fixing up these buildings or what? And they said, no. We kept looking around for we're older and we're afraid we're going to die and the state's going to take this over. We're the only two trustees left and said we kept looking around for somebody who was helping mountain people, and God kept leading us to you, so we want to give it to you. Now, some things you don't need to pray about. Yeah. If somebody's going to give you a 25-acre college campus, I suggest you be prayed up already. <laughs> you, you better be ready for that kind of stuff. <clears throat> so I said, okay, I'll take it. And uh, they said, next question out of their mouth, we want you to give us a five-year strategy. That's a whole nother teaching. We don't believe in strategy planning. We believe in responsive planning. And you probably need to look at the scripture, see which one's most prevalent. We just respond to what God brings. That way we don't have any problem trying to design what's going to, what the outcome's going to be. It's going to be automatic success. See, so you never fail when you respond to God. But anyway, they said, what are you going to do with this campus? Now, what would you say? Somebody just gave you a 25-acre college campus. You know what I said? Man, I don't have a clue. But I don't, um, the same God who just gave me this campus will be the same God who will tell me what to do next. You don't have to figure out everything for God. He's already got it figured out. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. You know what? We've forgotten how to follow. We know how to do, but we've forgotten how to follow. And so the Lord is teaching us just to follow him. So that whatever he brings to us, God is multiplying. And now that ministry is vibrant. We're uh, going to start real soon a Christian school. And we'll be teaching kids uh, true history. And teach them about Jesus Christ at the same time. 
And it is amazing what God is doing in that little campus already, touching an entire county, a different county than where we are, in Letcher County, not in Harlan County. And everything that we have, God says, it's cookie dough for you. I'll give you this. If it's a retreat center or if it's a college campus or if it's a 60-acre farm with 21 horses that we minister to kids with, God says, I'll give you this, but it's just cookie dough. Um, i got to tell you this in closing. In the morning, I'm going to talk to you about faith in a little more detail. We recently had our retirement uh, party, and uh, I still serve as founder and chairman of the board uh, of our center there. <clears throat> um, but in that party, I asked him to try to get some kind of figure together of how much the Lord had brought into our community over the past 20 years as a result of what he has done in our area. And the total figure of that was over $30 million. Only God, only God could do that. At the same time, restoring an economy, restoring nature, and restoring people. People is the primary, but everything else just falls into line. And you can tell that we're humbled and grateful that God has allowed us to be a part of his kingdom where we are. <clears throat> and I trust this, that you will begin to believe God to do the impossible for where you are. Because with man, it is impossible. But with God, nothing is impossible. All he has to do is tell you, and it's a done deal. Can I pray with you? Father, we're grateful today for your word. I, uh, I just shared uh, from my heart today, Lord, about um, where you've brought us from and what you desire to do, but I, I sense in my spirit that some of us might be wondering what the next step is, and Lord, we just need to hear from you so we can believe you to the point that you can show up in our lives in unbelievable ways so that other people could see your mighty work and be drawn to you. So Lord, I pray that you would encourage your people today. May we live as live unto you so that you might be glorified in our lives and through our lives that others could be drawn closer and closer to you. Forgive us our sins. Use us for your glory until you use us up. And Lord, we can hardly wait to see you. In Jesus' name, amen.